Today we're comparing cheap versus expensive leather jackets. This cheap jacket is $130 by Milwaukee Leather, at least that's what the branding says, and the expensive jacket is $915 from SHOT NYC. Let's get to it. Alright guys, we're starting with this Milwaukee Leather Jacket. I do want to get something out of the way. The provenance of this jacket, it is made in Pakistan, which is a little deceptive considering the name. But there you have it. We're going to compare these jackets based off of their materials, which includes hardware, the construction, and then the design. This, how does this jacket jacket? So first off, the materials. This jacket feels cheap. It does feel kind of heavy, so it has that going for it. But the leather itself is very heavily embossed, what I assume is cowhide. It does not tell us. It just says genuine leather, and the lining is 100% polyester. So there you have it. The lining actually, by the way, has a two part. This mesh hanging part is intended for insulation. Underneath you see there's a lining that lays flat up against the interior side of the leather. It can be unzipped. It's what they uh, intend to be an easy way to apply patches, I suppose, to the back. Whoop. However, I don't know how much use you'll get out of that for using this jacket on a motorcycle, which I'm thinking people using patches is for. Um, let's talk about the leather a little bit more. So I noticed when going over this jacket, there are several points of issue. Just as a brand new jacket out of the box, it has a scratch right here. It has an area, if I could find it again, with two little hole punches on it. Ah, here it is. Can you see this? Right there next to my finger. This is right out of the box. There may very well be other issues like that. The embossed leather kind of hides them. It's the casino floor equivalent of leather jacket hides. It also kind of came pre-creased like this. <sighs> the polyester lining. Okay, so there's both a smooth air-filled lining here, there is a mesh lining here, and then another polyester grade here. The interior one actually feels the softest and plushest of them all. The, the one against the leather feels quite cheap. Um, so I have to imagine it's low-grade materials there. Uh, no surprise. Let's talk about uh, the snaps. They came cloudy out of the box. I don't know what they did to these snaps, but they didn't come out shiny and clean. Uh, the zippers, hey, YKK, even a cheap YKK, I have to say, they make great zippers, so good job on that, guys. The belt, flimsy. I think it just emphasizes the nature of this bad leather. Other part of the material, the rawhide here. I'm not sure if this is good rawhide or not. I'm afraid to pull on it, so I might break it, but it feels kind of dry and crusty, which has to imagine it might break pretty easily if you start really cinching down on these uh, adjusters here. So there we go, overview of the materials. Let's talk about the construction. How well is this jacket made? Like, how is the craftsmanship on this jacket? One easy way to check that is to look at this big, long main zipper line. You can hold it straight up and down. Woo! I don't know how well you're able to see this, but if you look down this line, formed by the zipper being sewn in, it is not a straight line. <laughs> in fact, it wiggles so often, um, th there's not just like one single part where they just had a, mis uh, a misread on the sewing machine. The whole thing is just a little wiggly back and forth. Not a good sign. I mean, that's the part of the jacket that really draws attention for folks that are looking at details. The same is held to be true on the other side. Let's talk about stitch work on the back. This looks, honestly, marginally cleaner. Maybe just because it's moving around to follow the curve, it's a little harder to see. Not great stitch work, guys. I don't see many loose threads or any loose threads, so they have that going for them. It does appear that there are some parts here where the jacket was glued together, perhaps, and then sewn. Um, but it's kind of dirty looking with some residue underneath the edges there. Not great. Let's, let's increase your finishing work, my friends. Okay, now let's talk about the design of this jacket and how does this jacket jacket. One thing I do want to point out is the construction of this collar. If you notice, it wrinkles up against the back of the neck. That's because it's essentially one piece that folds over. A better design involves a piece that it lays flat that then attaches for the curve over to the back. And this jacket lacks that, so it will be wrinkly and bumpy against the back of your neck as you're wearing it. All right, so we have the jacket on. I gotta say, this isn't the perfect fit for me. I did buy a medium, 
So take it with a grain of salt from a fit perspective. Um, the jacket feels big and long on me. How does this jacket jacket? Okay, one thing I would note, these zippers on the sleeve ends are supposed to create a pretty wind tight closure on the, against the end of the, uh, the, the wrist. This is <laughs> not wind tight. Uh, let's just call it what it is. That is a huge gap. Um, I also want to point out that the uh, lining here that continues into this part, this seems to be an okay design choice, though it feels cheap. All right, so the jacket zips all the way up. Kudos for that, friends. Here we see the tongue having a hard time fitting through this belt, which honestly feels completely irrelevant, and I'm showing you why. The belt ends at the seam here on the side, rather than continuing to the back and actually connecting to the back of the jacket. Why is this a problem? You want to cinch the whole jacket around, not just this area right here at the front. <laughs> it should connect all the way to the back panel. All right, we're done up. I want to talk about the waist adjuster here, the cinching uh, kind of addition here. It's supposed to make this more of a universal style fit. I want to say though, that if done properly, this amount of material here underneath the cinching, it's going to be difficult to tighten because as you can see, it is the same width as the re remainder of the jacket. They've simply just added on this uh, flap here with the holes to be cinched in. It's gonna bunch up so much and not have an easy time tightening against the body. Jackets that are uh, better designed for this will actually create like a triangle shape perhaps. And so whenever you tighten, it comes together and brings the hem in as well. Also, the material underneath is rather thick. There's different ways of handling this. Sometimes they will use a thinner part of the same type of leather underneath in order to make an easier cinching here too. So the idea is there, but again, the execution and the, the fully thought outedness of it is kind of not. <clears throat> open this pocket. It does open. It's very difficult to get in there. It is a little too close to easily fit your fingers in. I want to also point out something about this kidney panel. I'm going to pinch it. You can see it's really just as pliable as the rest of the jacket. It's not supposed to be. This should be a little bit stiffer back here in order to provide a little more support and protection to this lower part of the body. Now, the effectiveness of a non-armored jacket aside, these are just the design principles that we're aiming for in a motorcycle jacket, okay? So this one is just as floppy as the rest of the jacket. <laughs> what, what is this doing other than looking like a motorcycle jacket. It's not actually acting like one. I want to also point out something too about the construction of these arms. That's a little bit hard to see with it on me. I want you to look at how this arm hangs. It has essentially no curvature to it. Now this is done in, a, in jackets by uh, shaping these panels which the arm is made of to mimic the, the way that a body's posture keeps an arm. If it's a motorcycle jacket, those arms will be rotated more forward to make the jacket more comfortable in a riding position. This jacket is maybe tried to do that, it's hard to tell, but it essentially just looks like a tube hanging off the body, which means that it's not made for your body dynamics. And that is really true for this whole thing. So there we have it. We have the materials, poor. The craftsmanship, poor. The design and Jacket ability, poor. $130, Milwaukee leather. All right, and here we have the expensive leather jacket. It's a shot, Perfecto. It's a 618 model, which goes for $915 right now at uh, shotnyc.com. And as far as the provenance of this jacket, uh, it's made in the United States. Their are factories in New Jersey. And I bought it used, by the way, so this jacket is not demonstrating a brand new jacket. I got it used, and I have worn it quite a bit in the nearly a year that I've had it. So take that as your little grain of salt. We're starting off talking about the materials. Of course, leather, it's a leather jacket. It's the most expensive part of the jacket. This is a nice leather. Um, we know that it's cowhide, they've told us. <laughs> they call it steer hide. For shots, steer hide is a stiffer hide that they have treated. It's got a top coat on it that's intended to make this jacket tougher against uh, the elements. Um, it has a stiffness to it. Even now, after having been wearing it in and breaking it in, it's not floppy. It has no corrected grain. This, this is not an embossed leather that has a pattern applied to it. 
This is just the leather. This is what it looks like. Um, so uh, let's get you a little closer to it. You can see the grain developing here on the arms. That's just through wear. Talking about other parts, other components of the jacket, the zippers. Uh, so shot, depending on when you buy your shot, <laughs> um, they've used different hardware over time, though all of it has been good in my experience. It's a big YKK main zip, ideal zips on the little uh, on the sleeves, and then I'm not sure about the branding on these little ones, but they all function well. The zippers are good zippers. The snaps actually have shot uh, on them, on this model. They work well. There is a satisfying closure and uh, release. It's uh, very solid snaps. Um, so materials are, are very good. They are high quality materials. They're not premium. They're not like the very finest vegetable tan leathers from Italy, but they're really nice. Talking about the uh, other materials on the jacket, we have this uh, polyester on the interior and then what appears to be, it might be, feels like duck cloth, but it's probably also poly, I guess. Um, it is a smoother feeling. It uh, has a breathability to it. This is a pretty quality uh, interior lining here. Um, it goes on off easy and it feels robust without being too rough. It's a good material. The sleeves, by the way, are lined in something different. This material, oh, it's the same as what's in the pocket. I never noticed that. <laughs> uh, as many times as I've worn this jacket. Uh, to make it easier to go on and off and not bulk up your sleeves. So, uh, talking about the construction on the jacket from a craftsmanship standpoint, I see a loose thread here, but I've worn this jacket quite a bit. Um, and looking down the line, it is much straighter, although it is not some kind of laser perfect mode. The stitching around the pockets is neat and well done. Looking at this back area, this is a complicated zone here, and it's well done. Again, the stitching is a little bumpy here and there, uh, but better than on the cheaper jacket. So, pretty good. I put this like middle, upper grade, uh, well put together, but not the fanciest sewing work. Now let's talk about the jacketability of this jacket. And I think this is where this shot jacket really shines, aside from the materials. How well does this jacket jacket? Well, the best way to find that out is to put it on. It feels good on the body. Obviously, this jacket is a better fit for me than the other one. It rests well on the shoulders. Let's talk about the sleeve thing that we just did with the other. Look at this. This sleeve, it bunches here to create a better seal um, against my wrist. Comparing open versus closed, it's really on there. It does a good job of making it tight. Okay, excellent. Um, this back panel here, it's stiffer. <laughs> this is stiff, yeah, sure. This is stiffer partially because the leather is folded underneath there and it's a smaller panel, so it has a uh, greater tension across it than a big, large panel. The belt goes easily into the belt loop. Small, but it matters. Now, I wanna show you also, this belt connects to the back panel. Amazing. It actually can cinch across the side and back to the front of the body, like a belt should do. Work in this pocket. I can get my hands in there a little bit easier. It's a degree of millimeters, honestly, but it's actually just functionally easier to use. So there we go. I also want to show you the neck on this jacket and how the arm hangs. Notice, this one is made with a stiff piece that ends right before the collar fold. So that what lays against your neck is very flat. It is not bunching up right there. And in fact, if we see, th there's a whole construction that goes into this neck. Different panels stitched together in such a way that it will fold properly and feel good while on. That's a well thought out jacket neck. Let's talk about these arms. Now I've worn this jacket more and so it has some shaping to it. You can see how it wants to curve. And looking here at the shape of the jacket, it comes a little straighter out the box, but you can see the way that they have sewn these panels, which just have amazing grain here, by the way. They have built it to where it curves. These curves directly impact the way that the sleeve hangs. 
this panel is built to shape towards the arm. It's because this jacket is made to ride a motorcycle. And they thought about it so that you can be up like this. So uh, design, jacket ability of the jacket. This jacket is really well made from a design standpoint. I mean, you could take those cheaper leathers and build it exactly like this, and it would feel so much better on because of the nature of how this jacket was thought out. So, materials, these are good materials. They're not the top tier, but they're very good. The construction, I would say middle upper. Not the very best, not the very worst, but functional. And then when we get to the design, the design is so well done. <laughs> Shot really does know how to make a good jacket. And it shows in all these little ways that translate into a good wearing experience and a jacket that's more practical to wear for its intended purpose riding a motorcycle. So we've compared the materials, construction, and design of this Shot jacket versus the Milwaukee leather jacket. It was not an exhaustive list. I do want to caveat that. There are other possible ways to compare these jackets. But I just want to give some good examples of these differences between cheap versus expensive leather jackets. So we've seen this comparison now between the $130 Milwaukee leather and the $915 shot NYC. So what kind of conclusions can we draw from this? You know, uh, cheaper definitely means much worse materials. <laughs> much worse materials. You essentially have a jacket that will not wear in and look better over time. If that's something you're looking for, that's going to be a major disappointment if you buy the cheaper jacket. We are also seeing um, some construction differences. Honestly, the construction is okay. Uh, it's fine across both. It, but, but really, in the design, man, the, the shot jacket, the design is so much better. It is so much more well thought out on every level. Does this matter if you're not actually planning to ride a motorcycle? Well, yeah. It does. <laughs> uh, you know, at the very least, you have a jacket that looks like it was built for a purpose, and that purpose is something other than costumery. And you cannot fake the genuine article. If you're trying to fake the genuine article, it just comes off as super fake. You know, I think that, you know, the problem you have with a shot jacket that I hear is um, hard to pull off. And really, this is just a matter of being willing to be someone that is seen wearing a motorcycle jacket, whether you're riding a motorcycle or not. You know, the problem with the Milwaukee leather jacket is people are going to wonder what costume party you're going to. It's a pretty bad problem to have. So, <laughs> I mean, I guess, yeah, if you are going to a costume party, get that cheaper one and call it a day. But if you want a jacket that you'll be wearing and wearing a lot of, paying the extra money really pays out the dividends, both in the quality of the materials and how they'll look, and in the, the, the feel on the body and the overall vibes. And can we put a dollar value on vibes? <laughs> That's for you to decide. Thanks for watching.